On today's episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, we're following up from our Monday episode to, <laughs> to, to, to discuss whether or not Titus Howard is underappreciated. Boy, you guys need to stick around for that. Also, Ezra Thibodeau of Texas A&M Kingsville joins the show. NFL prospect draft is in a few weeks. Will he hear his name called? Uh, I can't wait for this conversation. You are Locked On Texans. Your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Turn up, 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 Locked On Texans listeners and viewers to this Tuesday episode of the Locked On Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Day, thank hmm. you to all of our first time listeners and viewers out there. Please subscribe, like, and comment to the Locked On Texas podcast on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast, wherever you listen Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Please subscribe and like us there. Thank you to all of our returning listeners coming back. Some of y'all may not be pleased from <laughs> Monday's <laughs> podcast, which has prompted our first talking point today. But thank you to everybody coming back as we continue to talk, te- listening as we continue to talk Texans. I'm your Texans football analyst, John, some sports guy, Hickman. On the other side of the screen, Texans credential media member, Sports Illustrated's own Cody Davis. Before we dive into today's show, I do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Uh, today we'll be talking about Javante Sweat. Uh, at a rough weekend, but is he an ideal target for the Houston Texans? I think a lot of us still believe that Houston should look for, to upgrade or at least add to that D-line position. Uh, we have a conversation with NFL hopeful Texas A&M Kingsville NFL prospect Ezra Thibodeau. He'll be joining to talk the NFL draft. That's going to be uh, a, a very important conversation. We love talking to prospects here on the show. Stick around for that. But we open up today's show talking about Titus Howard and is he Hmm. underappreciated now last week Titus Howard really helped this franchise out by uh, restructuring his contract gave Houston the necessary boost that they needed to take on the Stefan Diggs contract which they took on in that trade I mean he was a huge proponent uh, to getting that deal done Hmm. Uh, but I had Sam Munson on the show yesterday and he believed with the number 42 overall pick, the Houston Texans should look to upgrade the offensive tackle position, the offensive line position. And a lot of you guys were not feeling that in the draft, feeling that conversation uh, in the YouTube comment. Blackjack1208 mentioned he doesn't know who Titus Howard is or that we just paid him or that he plays tackle, not left guard. Um uh, another comment here was uh, he constantly mentions Titus and Green as if they play the same position. I do think that was a little, you know, confusing for some of our listeners. Uh, also, and that's why PFF can't be trusted, offensive line. I think Houston will a- address it in a draft. You know, they have three seventh-round picks. You know, there's always an opportunity to add depth. But with the number 42 overall pick or any – of the three top 100 picks, I would be shocked if Houston drafted a lineman. They definitely not drafting a lineman. You you know, that conversation that you had with Sam, it kind of reminded me of, about uh, when we was preparing for the 2022 NFL draft back when the Houston Texans had the number oh. 23, number three overall pick. And everybody was talking about what well, all of the national media is not the local media was sitting there talking about the Houston Texans was going to take Evan Neal. And as we know, we kept saying, no, it's going to be a cornerback. And that cornerback is going to be Derrick Singley Jr. And look what happened. That cornerback was Derrick Singley Jr. Well, it Stingley. was the, the conversation was, Oh, sauce Amal and Sauce and Singley, you're sauce right. And singly. Uh, but yeah, that was it. That was a talk of our show. But mm-hmm. nationally, it was Evan Neal or Iki Kwanu. Yeah, and uh, and you look how that turned out. But you know, it, it goes to show, like to me, John. And I know we're talking about the present, but I really want to just kind of talk about the past as well because ever since 
Titus Howard has entered this building ever since 2019 when the Houston Texans took him in the first round. It always seems like he was always an unappreciative player, um, especially over these last couple of seasons, especially during the time where the Texans ended up, you know, doing their rebuild from 2020 to let's say 2022. Cause I'm going to exclude 2023 because you know, it was the injury year. He began the year. He got hurt early in training camp with the hand injury, you know, missed about four games and he ended up coming back and went down with a knee injury soon. So the 2023 season was definitely a lost year, but from 2019 to 2022, I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think nobody in the world could name me 10 right tackles who have played better at that position than Titus Howard as of right now. No, I'm not sitting here saying that he's a top three, top five player at that position, but he has always been a borderline Pro Bowl caliber player, even in his worst year. 2021 when he was playing left tackle and maybe that's where Sam kind of got confused mentioning um Titus Howard along with the same likes of Kenyon Green but even in his worst year he still put similar numbers to his career year from 2019 to 2022 this young man and Titus Howard has has given up an average of 2.2 sacks <laughs> you, you know like how good that is once again, 2021, he only allowed two sacks for the entire season. Once again, I do not believe there is a right tackle, 10 right tackles who have played better at that position than Titus Howell. If you put together a list of the top 10 players that Houston Texans have had since 2019, let's just school 2023, of course, Titus Howard's name is definitely going to be on the list of the best, most impactful, most influential, Anything that you think of, Titus Howard name has been valuable to this organization. I always tell people this when you start talking about Titus Howard entering the 2024 campaign. We've been around Nick Casario long enough to know that if he feels that he can get an upgrade at a particular position, he's going to make the necessary moves in order to get the job done. George Fent had a damn good season with the Texans this past season. But there was a reason why he felt comfortable allowing George Fant to walk out the door off at 610 into a Kirby and making sure that he stick with Titus Howard. And I understand it. I get it. Titus Howard literally just signed his extension last year. But Nick Casario understands and Nick Casario understands how to maneuver a contract. He understands how to rework a contract in order to get yeah. a trade if necessary. Once again, there's a reason why he stuck with Titus Howard over George Fan. By the way, shout out to George Fan, man. Really going to miss him. But Titus Howard, to me, has always been underappreciative. Yeah, and I think when you take the money out, right, when you when you take the extension now, when you take a lot of these things out, I think saying Houston needs to take a lineman at 42, whether it's interior or exterior, when the glaring need of what we talked about last week, you know, when we had the Edrian Cooper conversation, mm -hmm. the glaring need of an additional linebacker, right? I think 42 is a, a position, a player where you can get somebody that can come in and potentially start or play over 50% of the snaps. You don't traditionally do that for a position group where the depth is there. Because mm -hmm. if that's the case, where well, you feel like one of those guys would be able to be starters or, you know, <clears throat> go in and potentially play additional snaps. And for linemen, if you're not a starter, you're not playing over 50% of the snaps. So 42 is a starter spot. Houston has that starting lineman already ready to go. I mean, in, in some variation, it'll be Laramie, Titus at the tackle, Mason at the guard. I, I think Juice will get the center position, and we'll see how the camp battle between Patterson and Green goes. But that's going to be the variation of the offensive line Mm -hmm. Nobody at 42 is going to come in and take that away. I don't think so. I really don't mm -hmm. believe that. I don't see that happening. 42 is a, posi a, a position in the draft where you look to get something that this team needs, a corner, a safety, a linebacker, right? If you, if you want to say another receiver, I think after the Diggs trade, <laughs> I don't think there is an, a need. Or we'll talk about Sweat at 42, maybe, you know, D-tackle, right? But for offensive linemen, I just thought that that was – I don't want to. I don't want to sound rude here, but I thought that was very just misinf misinformed. Um, this team doesn't need that at forty-two. And talking about, we're talking about is Titus Howard underappreciated? 
I have said that I think Houston should trade him. Mm-hmm. I, I I think that there was possibly an opportunity for them at the time of me saying that to look and see if there's other value out there. But I've also campaigned for them to look at options on bringing Fant back and maybe moving on from Titus Howard. And I've I did that either on the show yeah, or remember that. behind scenes texts and phone calls, right? But with even with me saying that. The last healthy year Titus Howard had at right tackle, I mean, he only allowed three sacks. But when you look at what he gives you as a protector of the quarterback, hmm. now we can look for, you know, nitpick his game in terms of helping out in the run. We can do the same thing for Larry Thompson in some cases. But when you look at him protecting the quarterback, Larry, I mean, uh, Titus Howard does that fairly well when he's at right tackle. Mm-hmm. When he's at the position – where he needs to be. He is not a guard. We understand that. We've said that over and over again. But <clears throat> in 2020, where we saw him take a leap in the better direction, he played over 800 snaps at right tackle. He only allowed two sacks. 2022, he played over 900 snaps at right tackle, allowed three snap uh, sacks, excuse me. Uh, I also will go back to 2021, where we saw him get some play at left tackle, and he did a very good job of stonewalling some of the better uh, edge defenders at that time. So when you look at what he's able to provide you as a pass protector, I, I think, again, saying that Houston needs to draft a, a lineman with the top three 100 picks is just very irresponsible. And I also want to take it a step further and say that the combination of whether or not Juice, Green, or Patterson, who will get those two starting spots at left guard or center, I don't think for Houston they're going to overlook the talent that they have on the roster right now. From two guys that were productive last year, they're not going to overlook that for a guard in this draft and a draft for guards that isn't that great. Right, so uh, a lot of the comments, I, I agree. I just thought that saying that Houston needs a lineman was just at forty-two, isn't the way I would have went. I do want to say that I believe that Sam Munson gave some good insight on the running back class this year. A lot of people may think that this year's class isn't that great, and compared to other years, it may not be. But there's still some gems in this year's draft that I believe can impact the Houston Texans later in the draft, and uh, the conversation surrounding Stefan Diggs' contract. So I thought that that was an interesting point. But, again, I do believe that for this team and what what is transpiring since day one that he walked into this building, Tadis Howard has been underappreciated. But today's episode was brought to you and sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend time in our lives wishing we had more time. The question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze in that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you the most so you can do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suitable to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Learn to make more time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash therapy. Excuse me. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get your 10% off your first month. BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. Welcome back in Locked On Texas listeners and viewers. As promised, NFL hopeful, Texas A&M Kingsville prospect, NFL prospect, Edge Rusher, Ezra Thibodeau joins the Locked On Texans podcast. Uh, my favorite time of the year. We get an opportunity to talk to these young men about uh, achieve, achieving their goals in life. But before we get into the football aspect of the conversation, I know it's been a grind mentally and physically getting prepared for the draft. So my question to you is, to get your rest, what do, do you rather do? What do you prefer doing? A day of watching My Hero Academia marathon or a day in the nature, maybe hunting and going camping. 
Mm. What's your good getaway that you like? <clears throat> Honestly, it would be the My Hero Academia Marathon for sure. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good answer for sure. Okay. Really quick, My Hero or are you, like when you rank animes, you look at My Hero, DBZ, Yu Yu mm -hmm. Hikishimo. What's your top anime show? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Naruto's one. You know that's a hard question. <laughs> yeah, that's a good tough one, one right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we got my top. My personal already. favorite would be Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is a hot one. Okay. Mm, okay. Well, yeah, that, I, that's I, my favorite right there. Outside of Pokemon, I never really got into anime too too much, you know. So I'm not even gonna tell you what <laughs> yeah, I do. Come on, you gotta like. get on board. <laughs> you gotta get with it. <laughs> John, John knows what I what, what I like yeah, to do. Yeah, come to on, relax. Man. <laughs> but um, you know, you had an opportunity last Thursday, correct? Um, to participate in the Houston Texans mm -hmm. Pro Day. Um, what was that moment like for you, especially considering that you are a Houstonian kid? It was just a blessing. Um, it was really exciting. You know, I was. I was honored to have been invited up there to go meet with the coaches and talk to them. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, honestly, I was just kind of nervous the whole time. Didn't know what to do. Didn't know what to say. But, you know, kind of feeling accomplished too as well, knowing that, you know, I'm making progress and me chasing this dream of mine. You met Coach D'Amico? Was he at the um, pro day? Yeah, he was. We talked for a little bit. <clears throat> he introduced himself to all the guys, and we talked a little about their process and what they believe in there in the new facility. Mm, how was it when mm. you met? How was it when you met D'Amico? Did you get that feel that so many players always, you know, talk about like Joe yeah. Mixon, Daniel Hunter? <laughs> yeah, for sure. He's like he a good dude. He's a good dude, and um, kind of like just the way he talks, the way he describes everything. <clears throat> there, his reason why as to leading this team is um, you you believe it, you want to buy into, it, and you, you understand. It's, he's a guy you want to go work hard for, and he's good as far as like. Bridge, bridging that gap between, especially us on a prospect day, you something it's like, you know, don't be stiff, y'all smile, laugh. I want y'all to be ourselves. We brought y'all here for a reason. We like who mm -hmm. y'all are. Now we're going to learn what y'all know about ball. So it was a good time. I know you're talking about making progress, and I know this is also something, you know, the day I first met you, met you at um the ACU Pro Day as well when you was working out – when you was working out mm -hmm. alongside Jalen Hunt. Um, But what are some of the feedbacks that they, you know, had an opportunity to um share with you? Um, they were saying that they they liked how I moved. They liked my size and my capability with me being, you know, as big as I am. Um, they said they liked my physicality and my pursuit to the ball after watching film and things mm, like that. That's good. And, um, you know, <clears throat> they quizzed us on football knowledge a little bit. I feel like I did good there. I picked up where they were throwing at us pretty quickly. It was a, pretty similar to what we ran here at A&M Kingsville. So, you know, I feel like I've been shining really good. So, you know, hopefully that leads to something in the next coming weeks. Hmm. You know, I read a quote regarding the next level from you that read, this is something that I want. I will do whatever I can to get this opportunity. My work is going to show you continue it. Uh, being at a bigger school, you might have a higher chance. But regardless, these teams are looking for players who will work and show up daily. And that's what we do down in South Texas. So I want to ask you about that. And I want to address the, your bigger school and opportunities comment. How often do you feel smaller schools and smaller athletes get left out of draft mm -hmm. conversations due to the university that they're playing for, play ball at? And I want to continue with that by asking, what's something you've been working on in your game as a player to get better, to get better at and increase your odds of getting drafted? Well, with the um, big school versus small school question, yeah, I got you. <clears throat> Honestly, um, I feel like that the small schools do kind of – get overlooked at times it's definitely gotten better now in recent years because you know the division two level even d3 level we've been producing some ballers that like like i said just really don't get the shine because like we don't have uh contracts with certain channels for our games our games are only getting streamed on our local websites and things like that or local news channels and things and then uh oftentimes when you're in a smaller town you don't get a big turnout when it comes to crowds and having people hype for the games and knowing what's going on or what y'all are doing so there is like there's a um a difference when I come when it comes to opportunities and exposure, you know. And then um <clears throat> when you ask me about what I've been doing 
to up my game and increase my chances of me getting drafted. I've been working a lot on my ball get off and then really just shortening down my time with my pass rush moves. You know, oftentimes I get caught up thinking, you know, you'll see it in my film with that, that slight hesitation. So I'm trying to get down to where it's more so me establishing my move and forcing the offensive lineman to do what I do rather than me waiting on them to throw a punch or kick a certain type of way and then reacting off of that. Hmm. What can you share about your time and just the whole school experience of Texas A&M Kingsville? Mm. Kingsville, man, has a rich, rich history that a lot of people don't know about. You know, Kingsville is a small city in South Texas. A lot of people have never heard of it before. It's been many times where I've had to explain where I go to school at when people ask me and things like that, you know, family and friends mm -hmm. and such because they haven't heard of it. But once you come down there and you, especially on a game day, and you feel that tradition, you feel the love from the city that's backing you, that's supporting you, whatever you do, and you understand what they mean by saying have, have a lean to pride, because there's a rich history in Kingsville when it comes to winning national championships and producing dogs that go on into the league and go in to take over and run stuff. So um, I'm glad to have been able to come here. I'm glad for the opportunity to get a piece of it and see what it's like and understand that now what it means to be a Havelina. And now I'm proud to say that I'm one myself. Hmm. How can you, you know, what are some of the things and what has your journey been like to stay motivated? Because, you know, you talked about yourself being a prospect coming from a smaller school, um, Texans, A&M, mm -hmm. Kingsville, you know, not too many people even know about it, but how were you able to stay motiv motivated on the end goal of, you know, wanting to get to the NFL, wanting to play in the NFL? Because I'm pretty sure you had moments where you thought to yourself, man, is it even worth it? Should I, you know, take a different mm -hmm. path, different career, you know, and, and move on? Right. Um, staying motivated, I feel like. Honestly, I just have to give it to God because I feel like this is a dream that I've had since I was a kid. You know, we, we grew up going to church. We grew up believing in God in our household. And. It's hard. It's hard to put into words, but when you feel when everything's kind of aligning, you kind of feel like, mm -hmm. you know, like this is what's meant for me. And everything was aligning for me to get to this point in my life. And. I had no choice but to keep going. You know, my mom raised me to see everything through no matter what you do. And she was also a big factor into me staying motivated with this dream of trying to play professional football. The, her, my family back home, and even my teammates here in Kingsville, they always said, like, you're going you're gonna to be the one to make it out of here. You're going to be the one to make it. <clears throat> and uh, I had a high school coach tell me a long time ago, don't do it to prove the doubt is wrong. Do it to prove your support is right. And yeah. so I wear that now and saying, you know, like, I don't want to hush anybody up that, that didn't believe in me or didn't say I was going to make it and this, that, and the third. But I want to prove to those that did believe in me that I've got y'all and that y'all's belief is going to come to life. Hmm. Along those same lines, man, what are some of the things your family and friends are saying as of right now? Because the NFL draft is only a couple weeks away. And what a party at. That's what yeah. <laughs> We we in Houston. Hey, well, we gonna go back home for sure. Yeah, we gonna be in Houston for sure. Uh, but they're excited for me. They smiling. You know, they having their fingers crossed. Just looking at the time. They keep asking me what day it is. What day? It is. I told you already. You know, mm. they more excited than me. Feels like at times. I'm getting calls from family all over the country because they're just bragging about it all over. So um, there's a lot of excitement for sure. A lot of anticipation and waiting. But you know, they're telling me how proud they are, you know, me making it this far and how they just mm -hmm. can't wait to see what happens next. When I met you at the um, ACU Pro Day, one of my favorite moments mm -hmm. when I, you know, had an opportunity to talk to you on the side, you grew up a Texan fan. Your favorite player was Aaron Foster. Mm -hmm. and you know, Aaron Foster has, still yeah. has a huge fan base. So last question before I let yeah. you go. Two-part question. One, as a Texan fan, how was it for you to see the Houston Texans literally exceed expectation for this year? And two, and most mm. importantly, what it, would it mean for you to get drafted and play for your hometown? Man, shoot. With the Texans this season, honestly, it was a good culture shock. You know, we we came mm. and shocked the world. Nobody believed in the Texans and what they had going this season. A lot of people counted us out and – you know, what Coach D'Amico was doing with CJ, with all their pickups and drafts, draftees, they flipped the whole dynamic of what the Texans are about and bringing, you know, that juice, that swagger back to the city, man. And 
you know, it was good. It feels good because we always tell them like, oh, don't count us out, don't count us out. And now we we standing on there and proving it in the league. And now teams are kind of looking at us and kind of saying, oh, maybe they got they got something going on over there. And now people are tuning in. Mm. And then uh, for your second question about if I was to get drafted to the Texans, like you say, we we gonna throw a party. You know, we have a good time. <laughs> Just you know, I would get to stay home, see my family, and get to do it in front of the people that have believed in me since the beginning. And honestly, that's nothing. There's nothing I want more than that. You know, getting them to see my success because it's thanks to them that I'm able to be here. You know, hmm. Ezra, you just said we a lot of times. So hopefully, hmm. in the next five months you can continue saying we because this oh, yeah. time you are a Houston Texan. Man, we really appreciate you stopping by. Continue on your journey to be an NFL prospect, uh, NFL player. Right before we let you go, where can our listeners and followers uh, find you on all of your social media platforms? Um, on Twitter, it's Ezo underscore on one, easy O underscore on one. On Instagram, it's King Ezo, K I N G dot easy zero instead of the O. You know, a lot of people are gonna miss that. <laughs> and yeah, that's really where I'm at, where y'all can find me and, you know, stay up to date with me in the, during this process. Awesome, man. Thank you for stopping by. Continue Thank on your you. journey. Thank you for having me. Make the family mm-hmm. proud. Make us proud here at the Locked On Texas yes, podcast. But more, more importantly, make yourself proud. You got it, man. You will be in the league. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. Game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even easier and faster. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, Views from your seats and their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. They also offer last minute deals. Listen, you can save up to 6% off buying last minute for sports, concert, comedy, and theater events near you. Flash deals save even more with exclusive in app deals on select seats ahead of the game or event. You also get an opportunity where they offer you a credit of 110% of the difference if you're able to find that same section and row ticket somewhere else cheaper. You're not beating that. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Welcome back, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers. Before we close out today's show, it's Trevante Sweat, an ideal draft target for the Houston Texans. Over the weekend, he got himself into some trouble. Not going to dive too much into that. That's not our Mm -hmm. place as of right now. Uh, But hopefully he's able to bounce back from that. Uh, But I will say this, Cody, 42 or 59, and I can really see it being more so 59. I I do see Houston looking at Sweat and – so what could possibly be like a Dexter Lawrence for this team? Uh, so I'm going to tell you, what, Sweat can be the best version of Jordan Davis. I think he is, uh, I, I think he is, you know, well conditioned. He's much more conditioned than Jordan Davis. I think he's a little bit fitter. I think he's a little bit twitchier than Jordan Davis. Right, and and I think he has more stamina than Jordan Davis. So, when you look at a guy being able to come in and impact the team defensively, being able to help stop the run, I think that's what Sweat can be for this team. And then you have the you know the guys on the outside, Anderson, Hunt, Autry on the side of you. You know they got some ballers here at that D tackle spot too. But I think Sweat would be an ideal fit for Houston. I think so too, John. But and, and this is a conversation I've been wanting to have for an extremely long time. Um, but for me, I will feel better if they do not favor the defensive line with those first two picks. And I understand that they need to improve their interior. Um, but I think when you take a look at the progress and having more of an established player like Khalil Davis, I think he has the 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 attributes in order to fill that vacancy and help that defensive line even more. Um, and then when I just take a look at the defensive side of the ball, especially following the the trade of Stephon Diggs, I definitely believe forty two and fifty nine is definitely going to be on defense. It goes back to what you and I talked about last week. You know, can you find that you know quote unquote starting corner to start next to Darius Stanley Jr. at forty two or fifty nine, vice versa, whatever the case might be. Same thing with the linebacker position, but you know. 
but he is the one prospect where I would not be surprised if Coach D'Amico Ryan's and Nico Serio say, you know what, let's take a chance on Sweat at 42 because, once again, like I keep saying, there's three positions that Coach D'Amico Ryan's have put a lot of emphasis on at the end of last season. The front four, wide receiver, running back. And we have seen the Houston Texans go all out and improving all three of those positions. Yeah. And Coach D'Amico Ryan's love the front four more than anything. Yeah. So I really do believe that Sweat, Sweat is definitely a realistic game target game. at 42. You said what? Sweat could be a potential game changer. Yeah, he can. For this team. Because, I mean, look at it like this. <laughs> They're not going to ask you to come in and be a 100% snap getter day one. Mm -hmm. No. That's not the case. But when you pair him, Anderson, Sweat, Autry, Hunter, right, second and seven, third and eight type of deal. Now you're looking at two guys on the inside that can create pressure. If we, you know, expect for him to be able to translate what he did in college and bring it to the league with Sweat and Autry, then you're looking at the outside guys. And he's going to be the fourth guy in that equation that you really have to worry about. He can beat up on a lot of guys based based on pure strength and his athletic ability. Uh, ability. So uh, you know he could he could be a, a real game changer for this team if they decide to bring him in. Uh, that that would be nasty. Sweat would be a monster alongside those other three players. Thank y'all for listening to this episode of the Locked On Texans podcast. Please subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Also, follow me on Twitter at John underscore Hickman12. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody C-O-T-Y-D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.